One of the ideas um, behind having the meeting sort of came from Collingwood's and in the sense that Collingwood's had a lot of successes um, in its programs with harm reduction. So one of the examples that is often used is that we've had a shower and breakfast program that's been really good about uh, sort of including all members of the community in the neighborhood house. But at the same time, while Vancouver is very progressive in terms of its harm reduction approach and its drug strategy, at the same time there's also sometimes community resistance and community interests that are rightly so, uh, and they're justified, in terms of wanting to talk more about the issues that they face from drug, from drug issues and from harm reduction. When are some of those uh, community resistance you find when you were doing this uh, breakfast and shower program? I understand that you were having it for uh, two days a week and it was reduced to one day a week. What is uh, one of the resistance that uh, the neighborhood has? Well, I guess sometimes it's just that, uh, and this happens often in, in many neighborhoods, when... Um, when different people interact, sometimes there's misunderstandings. So um, people who bring their kids in and they see somebody with erratic behavior or something like that, they don't understand the person's fine, but from that there's sometimes fear and misunderstanding. And so, How do you think it should be over overcome? Well, by dialogue, dialogues just like this, this is exactly one of the reasons why we, why we held it, so that people could come together and realize that we're not so different and that um, people in their neighborhood that are, might be homeless residents also have lives and have interests and have issues that they want to address too and that can take place in the neighborhood house just as easily as your kids coming to daycare and, and other things. And that uh, homeless and the drug addicts, the ones were also little kids similar to the ones that are coming to the daycare center. Exactly. Well and one of the comments that uh, our participants made earlier is that drugs don't discriminate against different people like it can affect anyone in all walks of life and I'm sure we all know somebody in our lives that that has been affected by drugs or alcohol so really it, it can affect any member of your community and yeah. so do you think that uh, this neighborhood is uh, gonna uh, uh, expand their program after they uh, uh, change their uh, reaction of mistrust? That's a hard thing to say. It's sort of a continuing process that you have to keep keep sort of doing. You have to keep the lines of communication open. You can't say you have a successful discussion, but in a few years there's always going to be more issues that come up. So I think that um, if we want harm reduction programs like the shower and breakfast program to continue and to expand, at the same time there needs to be this aspect of continued communication and addressing concerns. To build trust. Yeah. Exactly. All right. This is uh, Dr. Kerry Young again uh, with us uh, today who has organized this uh, program. And the topic is uh, building trust in our neighborhood, harm reduction and civil society. And you spoke about four, to four points about harm reduction that's mm -hmm. more than just providing drugs and needles. Yeah, that's right. I think wh why I brought up these four uh, topics is because we're looking at, you know, I guess if I can start again, you think about harm reduction, everybody thinks about it's only a program for a, for a particular drug addict or a, a drug user, and is always focused on the individual person. But really, you know, harm reduction is much broader than that, and that message isn't getting out. And so, you know, for example, we, the first point I raised was, you know, uh, that everybody's noticing is that uh, when you think of harm reduction only or drug ad drug addicts only as a uh, as a criminal justice problem it's going to fail you know but it, it really is a health problem right and you know that that's what we talked about so the number one point was uh that it's not substance, substance abuse only, that uh, needs other services? Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, I, the point of me bringing this up, and I'm, I'm stuttering because I'm tired right now because we've had a real fantastic forum <laughs> tonight, was that, you know, a lot of things that we do is harm reduction. You know, whether it's a program for a child or counseling for kids or, or uh, single parents, anything that we do in a neighborhood house or a community center really is harm reduction, but it's not recognized as harm reduction. It, it's seen as a community or a family development or, or something, but it really is harm reduction. And we wanted to get that message out. Okay, your second point was that it's not just an east-west uh, divide, that uh, it needs uh, different approaches. 
Uh, yeah, that's right. Or I different mean, neighborhoods, I guess. Yeah, I, mean, I think this is the whole notion of reminding ourselves that every neighborhood in Vancouver is different. We're not a melting pot. You know, like some people would say, we're like a salad bowl, and that, uh, you know, the tomatoes are different from the lettuce. Well, in the same way as Collingwood is different from Point Grey. Uh, and we need specific product, specific programs for each neighborhood. Although there are some programs that could be homogeneous for any part of the Absolutely, city. Absolutely, yep. Like the one that you were doing here is uh, breakfast and shower. That's right. The breakfast and shower program, we actually stole the idea from Kitsilano uh, Community Center. I mean, those are some things that are common across. But as I was saying in, uh, when I gave my remarks earlier, that um, there's a lot of differences in neighborhoods that aren't recognized. And one size doesn't always fit all, you know, was my message. If it was very successful, this uh, breakfast and shower, why it hasn't expanded? Because I presume the homeless people need uh, breakfast more than just on Saturday. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, funding has always been an issue. And uh, the other problem, of course, is that getting communities to accept to have this many homeless people in, in their neighborhood two or three or four times a week has become an issue. And, um, you know, this is why we changed our, our focus from calling them homeless people to homeless residents, because they're part of our community, too. They're not just somebody who comes in and out. So the neighbors have to accept this, uh, this program besides uh, the funding that is required. That's right. Uh, how are the neighborhood uh, responding here for this program, Showers? It, it's always been a difficult sell, but we expected that. You know, um, we, we had two days a week, and because of some opposition to the program, mainly because I think the program was more successful than we thought. Now, we thought maybe we'd get 10, 20 uh, homeless residents coming through. In fact, we started to get hundreds at some point, and it grew so large that uh, we couldn't manage it. Yeah. All right. So do you think you need more volunteers and more funding for that? Oh, absolutely. Volunteers and funding is good. I mean, you know, we're, a lot of us are here every, every week, all the time. And, uh, and the volunteers, you know, we want volunteers who are consistent, that come all the time, because that's the only way you're going to build a relationship with our homeless residents. They get to know you, they get to trust you, they recognize you, and uh, that's the only way we're going to ever help them. So th this is one of the successes. The harm reduction has to be, to be successful, has to be accepted by the neighborhood. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. What, what was your third point? You, you talk about uh, <laughs> need more than Band-Aid, need uh, yeah. stable funding. Stable funding, and, and, and it's a real quick message. Uh, you know, a lot of funding that places like the, that Collingwood gets are like one-year funding. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be renewed from one year to the next, so we can't plan. So, you know, and if there's any changes that occur, we have no money really to adjust our program to fit. And so what we would like to see is multi-year funding. So at least we can plan for three or four years in advance. But currently we don't get it. That's why I, I said, you know, one-year funding is like a one-night stand. You know, you come, do your thing, and you're gone. And nobody knows you were even here. And especially now that we're having surpluses federally and provincially, <laughs> you, you would think that we would have all the funding that we, we need for specific uh, yeah, exactly. uh, needs like I kind of where, You know, we all wonder where the money goes as taxpayers. But I think, too, I think the message from our, our groups are, is that accountability is important. Even, even, you know, no, we understand that money comes with strings. But, uh, again, uh, we, we need some flexibility as well. All right. And I think we already talked about communications, which was your fourth point. And that's why and we're here. Yeah, yeah, I mean... To find out what people really, really think happens. about it and to have, have the program accepted by the neighborhood. And uh, you also said that we must uh, turn away from a paternalistic approach. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, I, yeah, I call it a father-knows-best approach where some expert will come in and say, this is what you should be doing. And they really don't know anything about the community. So it goes back to my earlier point that these programs have to be accepted by the community. And the only way a community, a community will accept these programs is when they have a hand in developing it, when they drive the agenda, when they drive the program. I mean, they're not against. I mean, people think that if a community gets involved, they're always against it. That's not true. They actually want to have, my experience here in Collingwood, for example, they really want to get involved to make it better, to suit everyone, so everybody's happy, you know. Uh, and like I says, daddy doesn't always know best, and one size shirt doesn't fit everybody. And that was the theme of tonight's meeting, was to... Uh have some consensus. Absolutely. Well, find consensus, but mainly to share ideas, to make connections and to know what works, what doesn't work, and where we need to go in a real sense. Not just talking about harm reduction in the academic sense or the theoretical sense, but what can we actually do or what are we doing that's working that's not getting extra funding.
programs are working. Well, uh, Kerry Young, thank you very much for your time.